now because uh, Lorelei it can be paired with a Rona, a Black Pivot, and a Cruel. Those are the three heroes that you want to pair a Rona with to have that uh, Lorelei with to have that major um, carry potential. The Water War Ultimate coming out of Lorelei just allows you to uh, essentially make them unkillable. Unless we then see the Lorelei move into the lane, something we haven't seen yet here on the World Championship stage is Lorelei heading into those carry positions, lane and jungle. And if Ace Gaming were to bring it out here, it I think I think it's something that Hunters potentially would have been dealt with yet. Well, it's the first time we've seen Ace Gaming play at the World Championships as well. They didn't play yesterday. We saw Hunters draw two uh, one and one with TSM. So Ace have had a little bit more time to prep for this game than Hunters have. The Kestrel ban from Hunters, and now we're going to see where Ace Gaming do decide to take that lower lie. They still have these two picks remaining. Yeah, I think a crew here would be a very strong pick just because it allows you to do whatever you want. Or if you were to, to pull out an Arden now, it would essentially indicate that your Lorelei is going to the lane. However, Vox does come through. Vox just the, the king of meta, the, the jack of all trades, is able to do everything you want. Very safe pick here. The Baron is gone. The Black Feather is gone. If you, you've reduced the counters to Vox heavily. Uh, Hunters could pull out a saw here. We know that they play it. And a saw with a Lyra is a very difficult thing for a, a Vox to deal with. I have to wait and see. Both these teams have interesting playstyles in the fact that they kind of match each other to a degree. But it tends to be, we see that Hunters are slightly more aggressive in the early game, whereas Ace play more around objectives and trying to take down those early turrets to get some gold on the map. Yeah, it's a very typical Korean play style. They want to minimize risk as much as possible by not looking for team fights uh, at every stage of the game, instead looking to take those objectives off the gold, get that uh, off the map, get that guaranteed gold into their systems. And then once they have a, an advantage via items or via timing, they then looked for those massive team fights. Sky. Yeah, Harmonious on Sky yesterday was absolutely incredible. Was one of the reasons that Hunters were able to take down TSM in that first game. So I'm looking forward to seeing that. Have seen it CP, have seen it weapon power as well. And considering the fact that yesterday against TSM, Harmonious's Sky was just such a threat to TSM, something that they weren't able to shut down and he was able to just be so abusive with a Dragon's Eye Clockwork build, allowing him to stack up a Dragon's Eye very quickly and then go into it. Hunters are fans of double CP, yeah. so this alpha pick here is a little bit deceptive considering the fact yesterday against TSM, they played a Batiste and a Sky, both crystal power, uh, which is not something we see too often here. Alpha also can be played weapon power. Sky can be played weapon power. This is a very intelligent A side draft coming out of Hunters. And it gives them so much versatility, as you say. We said earlier on, Ace with the Lorelei pick for that first pick had a bit of versatility for themselves. Now we'll have to see how they decide to round out this composition. Still a lot of options available for them. We'll have to see where they go. I think Batiste here would be the most rounded jungler that you can pull out for Ace Gaming. Batiste fairly good into Alpha for the fact that he can stop her from engaging onto your carry with the Ordain. The Fearsome Shade can shut it down as well. Sky also struggles if you get her into a uh, into that. Oh. This is so tricky because I know Tassa plays Crystal Power Arden Jungle. He is one of the only people in this competition that is willing to pull that out at a regular stage. And so we don't know where this Laurel is going. We don't know where this Arden's going. We'll find out pretty soon though as we get into the first game of the day. I'm very much looking forward to it. Having these complexities in draft, having to... You don't even at the end of draft know where things are going to go. Just allows for that next level of strat strategy and for shot calling for both these teams. It's interesting to see Ace really now being the only representative left from East Asia in terms of like, you've, you've lost rocks, yep. you've lost destination, it's up to Ace. They are an upstart team trying to challenge for that world championship once again. Not only that, uh, we've had all five regions apart from East Asia qualify for the quarterfinals now, which is unprecedented in world's history so go far. Go EU, G2, G2. Yeah, for sure, it's, 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 it's an SA as well. Yep. Impressive that Pain has made it there. This is, you know, so good. So Ace, needs to win if they want to have East Asian representative in the rest of this tournament. And it would be incredible to see them go out because a lot of people said Rox and Ace were their two favorites really to get through to those finals and to take the championship. Hunters here on side A, Ace Gaming on side B. It's the first game of the day here for day two of the Vainglory World Championships. And I, for one, 
and incredibly excited. It looks like it's going to be CP Lorelei here for Ace Gaming. Yeah, Tass is going to be taking that to the jungle. Has very quick clear speeds, uh, speeds with the, the fish food. Your passive, which allows you to amp up your crystal power when you stand on one of those pools, means that you can uh, take the jungle, uh, jungle even quicker. And considering the fact that Water War on 2.10 has a pretty intense CP scaling, um, he's going to be providing huge shielding for creation. This is very much a hyper carry creation composition coming out of Ace, uh, Youngju and Tassel will really just be looking to provide uh, room for creation to maneuver around this guy, around this uh, alpha, and, and protect him when the, the engage does indefinitely come through from Godfather. And we could already see the difference in decision making between the two teams as well. Hunters had a three-man group, went for the Elder Tree and Ace Gaming said, we don't want to take the risk of an early three-man fight. We're just going to back away, let creation go up into the lane and accept that we, we lose a small amount of gold, but we don't lose any lives because we don't go for the fight. Yeah, and this is something that East Asia does very well. You mentioned earlier that Ace Korea uh, was brought together to kind of be the new powerhouse of East Asia. And th so far they've shown that they're able to do that against Rocks uh, Amada in their regular seasons. They're the summer and the autumn champions of East Asia. And so it's going to be very exciting to see how they face up against Hunters who during the autumn season lost only a single match and that was in the finals against kraken they won every series and a lot of people said are hunters actually as good as we think they are because right. we didn't see so much from the rest of the chinese region well kraken went through from their group so as first yeah as first now you have to really put hunters up at a high regard in response to the rest of these teams once again the tree ain't going over to hunters there not really too much of a challenge from ace gaming you know you put the fish food down maybe you steal it with that passive damage proc but ace happy enough to play a slower early game and it does look like hunters are going to be going towards this double crystal power composition for themselves swagu nope I've, I've talked too early. He's going Spell Sword Alpha uh, in the jungle. That is something we just have not seen here on 2.10. Uh, users at home, of course, are going to recognize the Spell Sword buffs on 2.11. And I do think there's been some influencing of the 2.10 meta based on the current live patch. Uh, but Spell Sword Alpha is, is one of the only heroes that you actually can do that uh, on 2.10 because of the fact that Alpha is such a cooldown reliant hero. The uh, core stacks from your B allows you to stack up your damage. The weapon power version of Alpha has very strong mid to uh, late, uh, early to mid game power. And so Swag is really going to look to try and make the most of it. Now we see Ace actually going for a bit more of a fight around this Elder Tree. And it would be the third for Hunters. And once again, they secure it. They might go in for the engage onto creation. But a good splashdown from Tessa will push them off for the time being. Hunter's still going aggressive here, looking for the damage on towards that Vox, but Swagu is a little bit overextended, perhaps, as Ace are just going to back away. The engage from Harmonious, wow. so he strikes all the way off towards the back line, getting the damage down with that four barrage as well, and Tass is quite low. Hunters have forced Ace out of their own jungle. And they're going to steal away all of these camps as well. This is such shutdown coming through from Hunters to put Tasser on the back foot here. Very, very... Uh, clever gameplay coming out from them and if we're going to talk about the stylistic differences between East Asia and China in Vainglory, East Asia uh, at least at the 2016 World Championships were known for their immense aggression in the early game but there's been a shift towards a very more calculated game style throughout the year where they look to really play around objectives and power spikes instead of going just all in early aggression. China is still raw uh, unfiltered damage really just looking for those fights and this is a very stylistic difference and it's very interesting to see how that plays out. Oh, it definitely is but you have to give Hunters the credit as well. It's not all about just going for every fight you see. There they take a fight at the 3 minute 30 mark. They know the Crystal Sentry isn't up. They know they can push forward and then they back out at 4 minutes to make sure that they aren't caught out by that jungle intensification. Swagu doing a good amount of damage onto Youngju here as well. And that Arden should be safe for the time being. Let's have a quick look at these first items. It is Spell Sword on Swagu. Creation's gone Poison Shiv first for himself. Youngju still sitting short of that fountain, whereas Godfather is going to be able to heal up his team 
Harmonious now has the Dragon's Eye as well on this Crystal Power Sky. And Tassa's going after Shock on this Lorelei as well. There's a philosophy of thought on 2.10 that any jungler that can utilize Aftershock is top meta. And if your jungler can't utilize Aftershock, then build it anyway because it's just such a strong item here. It provides so much utility. This is the first time I've ever seen an Aftershock built on a Lorelei before. And what this is going to allow uh, Tassa to do is come in with his auto attacks after using maybe a splash down to get his team into a team fight uh, and just be able to to utilize his auto attack damage very efficiently often we see alternating current for that very reason but his next item here potentially is going to be a um, clockwork which is going to mean his ability spamage is going to be very strong he's going to have his water wall off cooldown quite often and this is actually going to go towards that win condition of hyper carrying uh, creation just making sure that he cannot die in team fights we have had a relatively slow early game here it looks like hunters are going to try and make a play around this turret but swaggy is going to take quite a lot of damage the turret takes a chunk as well down to about a quarter hp Considering we're six minutes in without a first blood, Hunters have been able to develop a relatively strong gold lead, about a thousand and a half gold ahead now. And they are looking for a little bit more while they still have this extra power spike. The Death from Above isn't going to connect on towards Ace, but Yonju goes quite low here. Does have the Fountain for his own if he needs it. So he strike in from Harmonious, but Ooh. here comes the damage from Creation. Gets the Water Wall as well with the shield. Yonju going in for the aggression, still not six. Godfather is though, and he can Arcane Passage away from this fight. And Hunters maybe overextended ever so slightly there, but they don't pay for it too much. Yeah, that was really clever from Ace to know that they just had to engage a fight if they wanted to push back Hunters. Now looking to get damage down on the turret alone. Oh, oh my goodness. One more resonance bounce would have been enough, but here comes Swagyu from the side. Does have that ultimate if he wants to jump into the back of the fight. The fountain used by Ace, and once again, Hunters have to retreat. And we're starting to see the interaction of Lorelei into Alpha here, especially a weapon power Alpha that needs to be auto-attacking for her main damage. Swagyu is being slowed down and not being able to actually get on top of creation. Ace now, the ones on the front foot as they aggress towards the Hunter's turret. Both first turrets very low, but still no first blood, still no first objective take for either of these two teams. We've talked a little bit about how Ace Gaming want to ramp up this box. What is it that Hunters are trying to do as they get into the middle portion of this game? Well, we're starting to see Harmonious get towards, or he has the gold, in fact, for a clockwork here. And this was the turning point in the series against TSM, that game one uh, where this sky just became too hot to handle for the North American, uh, you know, lords. Uh, and right now, that's the, the point they've hit here. Uh, a clockwork comes through, Harmonious will then build into a broken myth to amp up his uh, sh uh, piercing so we can just really cut through Ace Gaming here. And if Hunters can have Swagu on the front line just being a threat while Harmonious kind of dances around the team fight like he can do, then that's when they can start winning. Here comes the engage once again from Hunters, forcing Tassa away. The death from above isn't going to land, and Youngju is going to be able to get off towards safety here as well. Does have the ultimate of his own, the fountain up for both the two teams. No crucible on either of the Romas yet, though, so if some CC does connect, like onto Swagyu, he's going to be forced back. Creation almost gets the kill, but doesn't quite have the damage. Harmonious building up those Dragon Eye stacks up to five now, but Ace still relatively healthy in this fight. I'm surprised that Young Ju didn't want to pull the trigger there. It seemed like an opportunity to go straight on in. There's no Crucible yet for Godfather. He's gone Contraption second item for the cooldown reduction on his Sigil here. And for like four Scout Traps in a tiny area as well. Yeah. Put them all down, Dowsy. Well, that, that's also a threat though, because if you do dive on in with the Gauntlet, it restricts your area of team fight, and it's very potential that the Scout Traps can actually do a significant amount of damage. They've split Hunters here. Ace needs to look for an opening to try and put some damage onto Harmonious if they want to look to push this turret in there. Trying to push up. Youngju may have overextended slightly, but it's just going to get forced back by Harmonious. There was a good bright bulwark from Godfather to stop Youngju being able to come in with the gauntlet earlier on. Once again, these two teams just butting heads at the moment. It's important to remember that Hunters have already played TSM. They went one and one in that match. If they lose this series, they are very much in contention to be knocked out of the tournament before they're tournament has really even begun. Ace Gaming, yet to play a series, are looking for their first win of Vainglory Worlds 2017. And TSM and Ace went head-to-head -head at Mobile Masters 
only recently where TSM came out on top. So you have to feel that TSM have some understanding of Ace's style of play here. And so they're going to be feeling at least confident that they can match up against the Korean Giants in this tournament. But for Ace, a 2-0 would solidify their quarterfinals very heavily here. And they have a very good late game scaling composition as well. Here comes Creation once again. The Death of Mavub comes down looking for the kill. The turret goes though. And now Swaggy Yu needs to get in from the back line because Harmonious is already taking a chunk. Here comes Swaggy Yu, Young Ju looking for oh, an engage. Wow. Lovely. So much healing coming out. Youngju still alive. So is Swaggy Yu somehow in that black line. We'll get back towards the back of his turret. The turret, of course, has already fallen for Ace Gaming. They're looking to answer with one of their own and Creation steps forward. But here comes the re-engage from Hunters onto Youngju. Creation doing a lot of work down onto Godfather in the bottom side. He's going to Arcane Patches away. A great fist food onto Harmonious will secure the first kill of the game for Ace. And they're looking for a lot more. Creation's going to jump in. Looking for the triple. Oh, they can even get the God. Ace here. Hunters have been caught totally off guard. The fishery's not going to connect. But Tassa is not going to give up on this fight. It's a great sustain from Godfather as he uses the Imperial Sigil to get away. It means that there should not be an ace here for ace, but they should be able to take Godfather down eventually. Yeah, and look at what Creation is doing. Pushing the turret in so that they can at least try and uh, utilize this advantage that they've got. Already one turret taken in that process. They've damaged the second and now taking away jungle as well. Ace knows so well that when you win a, a team fight, even just by a margin that you need to try and take as much off the map as possible. Godfather securing jungle is good for hunters keeping that gold on their side rather but you know that is experience taken away from swagu who's playing this early to mid um you know power hero alpha in the weapon power format does fall off very heavily and ace gaming is only going to continue scaling and scaling into the late game creation now going towards a third attack speed item likely going to be a bone saw so he can cut through swagu on the front line and then transfer the breaking point stacks he's built up onto either harmonious or godfather and really just try and cut down this guy who is the single damage threat at this point from hunters and look at Creation, just how well he's farmed this game. At 12 minutes, he's sitting at 130 CS. Both the laners, actually, Harmonious is almost there as well. It means they're almost up at these four item spikes very early in the game, considering it's been low kill and low objective. We haven't even seen a gold miner go down, and these teams are incredibly even coming into the 13 minute mark. Yeah, it's extremely impressive coming out of Creation, 11 CS per minute roughly. It's above the average of, uh, and above the CS that is available in the lane. That means he's stealing jungles away uh, and really just pressuring hunters uh, at any given gop opportunity. Tassa as well is scaling very nicely here. Lorelei is a bit more of a secondary threat coming out of Ace Gaming because of the fact that she provides so much utility and protection for creation. But those fish foods are starting to do some damage. And once that broken myth is completed, or even a dragon's eye, depending on what Tassa wants to prioritize here, then hunters cannot afford to be getting caught in that CC. Breaking point has been compl completed on Swagu as well, so the longer these fights go off, the more stacks he'll be able to build up on that. But we're looking at creation and a harmonious when these frays do erupt. They are the primary carries for these two teams, so watch them. If one of them goes early, it goes down early in a fight, it could spell disaster for their team. And can you believe it's only been two kills so far during this game? With 13, 15 minutes, uh, 13, 15 seconds in, and the gold is practically even. These teams have just been butting heads consistently, but not being able to break break open any major objectives. The only advantage that Ace have over Hunters right now is the longevity of their composition here that they can realistically look to abuse whereas Hunters desperately look for engages and fights. Right, but what comes out the way for it as well has been used. Youngju in that front line popping down the gauntlet. Swaggyu needs to get out but is stunned up by the cage and now Ace can look for a bit more engage. Harmonious trying to back away, has those Dragon's Eye stacks though and he's going to jump back in Ooh. with the Suri Strike there looking for the Artemis, they can't quite get there. Creation jumps all the way into the front line, look at the healing, look at the shields on towards that box. It's all on creation it's all on ace and he's just gonna dive the back line by himself on this box gets himself a kill and now they're looking for a little bit more as creation dodging around goes in with the arcane passage once again but swaggyu's gonna take him down perhaps a little bit of an overstep there from ace as hunters re-engage onto youngju swaggyu's still alive but a great fish food will stun him up for the time being looking for a prime directive on towards that back line if he can get there the healing coming out from godfather youngju gets the water wall but is that enough shielding to keep him alive for the time being because tassa is low on energy pops down a splashdown to try and get away the prime directive still connects 
Alex, and now Tassa hasn't really got an escape. Another splashdown. Is it enough? It's not the core charge. We'll get the kill, and Hunters come out trumps in the fight. Creation is just so, so cocky when it comes to his Vox, and he knows that almost certainly 90% of the time he will run at opponents and he will out damage them with his fantastic mechanical ability but this time he bit off a piece of pie that he could not chew and hunters have been gifted a uh, breath of air in this game as the Kraken spawns as well, it's such an important time for Hunters to feel like they are still in it with a shot here because this Kraken can really just shift the uh, the longevity of Ace Gaming's comp backwards uh, and Hunters forwards and really just shift that power in, in such a massive way. So for Hunters, this next team fight around the Kraken or wherever it may be uh, is so important. Harmonious has just finished his Eve of Harvest as well with the healing coming through from Lyra, the Crucible that's now been completed so they can all escape that gauntlet. There's so many things available for Hunters to take this next team fight win and Ace Gaming have to be prepped for it. And it's important to note, Creation and Tassa have no armor. So if Swagu is surviving through these fights and getting those breaking point stacks, he will shred mm. through Ace. It doesn't matter if you take down Harmonious if Swagu is still very healthy at the end of the fight. But perhaps a little bit of an overextension from Creation in that last fight. He's now got Tornado Trigger. He's got that extra damage, got that extra crit. How effective can he be up against Hunters now? This build is going to allow him to stack that breaking point so quickly. If he is able to do any consistent damage and then transfer it to harmonious it's only going to take a few auto attacks to kill this guy here and so that means that not only is harmonious's position so important but so is godfathers and swagu if they want to start a fight up then they have to be wary of the fact that creation will use that front line to stack that breaking point up and then transfer straight into harmonious still no echo on towards the arden though so we're not going to see those venn diagrams of death from ace he's gone war treads instead has the fountain has the gauntlet has all of the typical roam items for his team 17 minutes in and there's only 200 gold between these two powerhouses the number one team from korea the number one team from china showing exactly how evenly matched they are certainly are and hunters right now are very much wary of the fact that their next team fight could be the one that wins them the game or the one that shuts them out for the rest of this matchup and there's a ticking time bomb above their heads it's only a hundred gold until creation completes that tyrant's monocle completing this very offensive vox build that he has drafted for himself it is a very difficult to deal with a Vox that has an Arden for shielding and as well as a Lorelei. He can frontline so much damage here and, and really just tear down the defenses of Hunters. Harmonious needs to consider the fact that he has no armor against creation here, a full crit build almost. Uh, and so he will be taking so much. That's where the Eve of Harvest comes up huge. That's where Godfather's healing has to be impactful and Swagu needs to create the space for Harmonious to shine. Youngju is going to have that Echo as well. So this, for the next team fight, it's about 50 gold away from it. So assuming it doesn't happen in the next three seconds or so, he should be able to back He's away going to buy it and now. get that Echo. There we go. Next fight is the defining moment of this game. Hunters still just w looking for that win. If they can take this, they almost at least guarantee themselves a tiebreaker later on. And so far what we've been seeing in the last minute is Hunters hesitant to engage knowing that it has to be perfect, but Ace Creation have just hit two major power spikes for their composition, and they haven't been afraid to take fights either, meaning that Hunters may not get that golden opportunity they've been looking for because Ace can now force a hand onto Hunters. Infusions across the board as well. Harmonious yesterday against TSM. He did such an amazing job on this late game Crystal Power Sky here. He feel he has to step up even bigger because Creation is at full build on this Vox. Bright Bulwark is down for just four seconds more. Godfather needs to make sure those Bright Bulwarks are used perfectly to shut down the engage. Look at that damage that just comes out from Creation. Thankfully, Lyra is starting to hit the point where she can heal for first heal for 700 damage, uh, or health, in fact. And so 
you know, that you can protect, but here we go. Mortal Wounds is gonna proc on towards Godfire. Here comes the first goal of the way through it as well. We'll lock out to Youngju, however, perhaps a bit overextended up towards the top side. Creation is chasing down on towards that Lyra. Tassa overextended the first blood. It's gonna go across towards Ace, but can Harmonious now get into this fray? Because it's Swagyu in the midst of three members of Ace, and he's gonna fall as well. Harmonious has abandoned the rest of his team. Ace win the fight, and will look to take the Kraken as well. And that is so scary for Hunters. The fact that Creation no longer needs to target Harmonious out of team fights because of this very offensive Vox build and the poison ship on top of it, he can run at a Lyra and execute her from the team fight. And once Lyra is Take down the Kraken, but two turrets for a Kraken is definitely worth it if you're ace gaming. And what Youngju couldn't do was echo his gauntlet. He did use Echo uh, recently. I believe he must have echoed one of his abilities there, yeah, potentially. It's gone in the last fight, I think. Well, yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. A, it's a long cooldown. He hasn't uh, uh, hit the point where he's overdriven his ultimate for that cooldown reduction. And, and uh, Echo in 2.10 was changed so that um, if you use it on an ability with a short cooldown, then Echo's cooldown is going to be much shorter than it was before. But for long, impactful cooldown abilities, its cooldown is even longer. Just really trying to cut down some of the abilities that Echo can provide, especially for an Arden on 2.10, where the Venn diagram, uh, you know, setup is still possible. Uh, Youngju needs to make sure that it's being used perfectly. Harmonious has now switched to a metal jacket instead of boots here on yep. the sky. This is something you can do on sky, and often you see it on weapons to power skies, particularly because you have such a high attack speed. Your stutter stepping with the heroic perk allows you to maneuver very quickly. It's much difficult, much more difficult to do it on crystal power sky because you aren't uh, using your auto attacks as much, you're using your abilities, and so when you're using forward barrage, you don't have any movement, you're just having to hope you're cutting down your opponent, and so Harmonious is going to rely on Godfather's heals essentially as boots. Stun onto Godfather, Death Mover is going to come down as well. Youngju off towards the top side of this fight, does have the Echo in the corner available alongside the fountain. Here stacks. comes Creation up on those stacks. Six Dragon's Eye, ten on the Broken Myth. Now here comes the corner. They're looking for that Lyra, they're trying to take her down the way for it comes out. The block, oh. not going to be enough, and now Swaggy is low, but he can try and engage up towards Creation, who has taken a lot of damage. Creation doing so much work in this fight, though, and Ace Gaming able to shred down through two members of Hunters. They're looking for the third, they're looking for the Ace, they're looking for the win. Great Fish Food will catch him out, and Ace take the Ace and look for the win in this game. Just nothing. Harmonious could do there. Such a risky gambit to not have boots against a Vox who just wants to charge at you. A Vox that has so much movement speed and ability to maneuver between the team fights, especially with Vanguard speed ups and splashdown speed ups. Harmonious tried to make the carry play. It just didn't work out here and A is going to take these crystal turrets. The champions of Korea show why they are regarded as one of the favorites for the tournament. They take down Hunters in the first game. We do still have one game left in this series, of course, but Ace looking very strong in game one. Certainly are. What a fantastic performance by them and a composition that we said so many times throughout this game would be valuable in the late game against what Hunters had drafted. It was very difficult for Hunters to do much in that late game. It was really having to be the uh, mid and early game dominant.